Hello, I'm Lisa Strait from the University of Washington Medical School and Harborview Medical Center. I'd like to present a study entitled, Use of Aspirin and Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drugs Increases the Risk for Diverticulitis and Diverticular Bleeding to be published in the journal Gastroenterology. My collaborators on this paper are Lydia Liu, Edward Wong, Edward Giovannucci, and Andrew Chan from the Harvard School of Public Health and the Harvard Medical School. As way of background, NSAIDs are a well-known cause of upper GI tract injury. However, over 50% of NSAID-related events occur in the lower GI tract, with diverticulosis being the most common cause. Case control studies indicate that the, that the use of aspirin and NSAIDs increases the risk of diverticular complications. However, these studies have several limitations, including small sample sizes and limited data on medication type, dose, frequency, duration, and timing. Therefore, we sought to study the relationship between the use of aspirin and NSAIDs and the risk of diverticular complications in the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, a prospective cohort with detailed long-term data on aspirin and NSAID use. The Health Professionals Follow-Up Study is a prospective cohort of 51,000 male health professionals who have been followed prospectively since 1986 via self-administered questionnaires a medical questionnaire every two years, and a dietary questionnaire every four years. In addition, men reporting a recent diagnosis of diverticular disease receive a supplemental questionnaire to ascertain further details and to confirm the diagnosis. Our outcomes for this study were diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding as ascertained on that supplemental questionnaire. We assessed NSAID use and aspirin use on the medical questionnaire every two years. Regular use was defined as at least two times per week. We followed men forward from the time of enrollment in 1986 until the date of a diverticular complication, death, or December 2008. We used Cox proportional hazards models to calculate hazard ratios and 95% confidence intervals. Our models adjusted for age, study period, as well as other potential predictors of diverticular complications, including body mass index, physical activity, and diet. In order to isolate the effects of aspirin, this analysis was limited, was limited to men who did not use NSAIDs. Similarly, the analyses of NSAIDs were limited to men who did not use aspirin. The comparator group in each analysis was men who did not use either aspirin or NSAIDs. During 22 years of follow-up, we identified 939 incident cases of diverticulitis and 256 incident cases of diverticular bleeding. Overall, we found that regular use of NSAIDs or regular use of aspirin was associated with an increased risk of diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. The magnitude of the increased risk for bleeding was similar in aspirin users and NSAID users with a hazard ratio of 1.7. For diverticulitis, NSAID users had a greater increase in risk than aspirin users with hazard ratios of 1.7 and 1.3 respectively when compared to men who did not use either aspirin or NSAIDs. We also looked at the subgroup of men who had complicated diverticulitis, diverticulitis with, as, with abscess, perforation, fistula, or obstruction. Men who used NSAIDs were over two and a half times more likely to have complicated diverticulitis compared to men who did not use either aspirin or NSAIDs. In addition, we looked at concurrent use of aspirin and non anti-inflammatory drugs and found that the use of both drugs together did not significantly increase the risk of either outcome compared to either drug alone. We had data on aspirin dose. We found that there was not a linear dose relationship between the use of the dose of aspirin and diverticulitis or diverticular bleeding. However, men who used moderately high doses of aspirin, four, two to six, 300, 325 milligram tablets of aspirin were at the highest risk of diverticular bleeding when compared to men who did not use aspirin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. We also studied the frequency of aspirin use. We found again that men who used aspirin with moderate frequency four to six days per week were at the highest risk of diverticular bleeding compared to men who did not use aspirin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The frequency of, of use of aspirin was related to diverticulitis. 
we hypothesized that our findings related to diverticular bleeding have to do with the antiplatelet effects of aspirin. At low to moderate doses of aspirin, the predominant effect is platelet inhibition. However, at higher doses, thrombosis and vasoconstriction can be seen. Lastly, we looked at duration of use. We found that duration of aspirin use was related to an increased risk of both diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. In conclusion, we found that aspirin use or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use was associated with an increased risk of both diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. These findings have important implications for clinical care and for public health given the prevalence of diverticulosis and aspirin use, particularly among the elderly. Patients at high risk for diverticular complications should carefully consider the risk and benefits of using these medications. Thank you, and we hope that you will see our full article published in Gastroenterology for more details.